My name is Ian Clement and this is another video for the CISQ 101 series uh, with regards to support. Uh, we're going to look at this time um, at some of the uh, hanger adjustments you can make and some of the information you can populate along with things like sleeves and things like that. So I basically got these hangers placed and uh, if you were watching the last video these hangers are all basically going up to a slab. Just uh, change that around to take a look at that. So, because these are connected to the slab, they're all being highlighted in black. Uh, all these pink hangers are basically have missed the slab, and therefore it's had to go back to their default length, and it's highlighted these in colours, so I know that these are, are, are broken, essentially. These are not valid hangers off there. So, um, what I'm going to do on here um, is I, I want to adjust these. I'm going to pretend that uh, this slab that I've got that is only covering part of my model really is extended all over the model but it's missing out the model itself um, so I'm going to change my placement options here off the support menu uh, to use the apply to selected level so I'm going to tell I want all my hangers to go up to level 2 but assume that there's a, a 6 inch deck thickness on there again this can be changed to whatever you need this to be but I'm going to basically assume in my case it's a 6 inch deck so if I save that as my default now, I want it to recalculate all these hangers. So if I just select everything here, like so, and from the support tools menu, uh, we've got this calculate hanger rod. That's not going to adjust the position of a hanger, it's just going to basically try and reconnect the rod. So if I click on there, goes through relatively quickly, and you can see now, all my hangers, regardless whether they were originally under the slab or not, are all now connected to the slab. Um, you can see that all these are actually reconnected off there. So just a couple of other tools you've actually got uh, available to you. Um, these hangers are obviously much closer to the bottom of the slab than they are from the floor. Now a hanger itself, if I grab any particular hanger off there, um, you will have its elevation, um, so in this case it's shown the, the centre of the, um, uh, the hanger here is actually at 9 feet. Now what I may find more useful is knowing from the underside of the slab to the location of the pipe, the bottom of the pipe essentially, it's, it, we call it top of hanger, but essentially it's the bottom of the pipe there. And by default all of those are, are basically blank. You can see from this value here, they're not filled in. But what I can do, um, I'm trying to use just one hanger. I could, I could window, let me window in a few of these and grab all of these hangers. I'd like them to populate this bottom of hanger value. So if I select that and go up to the tools menu and I've got this update bottom of hanger. That brings up this dialog. And basically I've got two levels in there, so it's saying do I want to calculate that from level 1? So I'll be basically going from level 1 upwards. Do I want to go from level 2? Which is, this is level 2 here, this line, measuring down. But obviously if I'm trying to install a hanger, I can't access, I don't know where this is. I do know where this slab is though. So if I choose the floor, or foundation, 6 inch foundation slab here, the one I've got drawn here, and hit the OK. That will go through these particular hangers. So if I come back and reselect this one, you can see now it's got this bottom of hanger value filled in. So it's actually minus 2 foot 6 and 21 30 seconds in this case. Uh, so if I was actually installing this hanger and I'm on a scissor lift, let's say, all the way up here, um, it's much easier for me to measure 2.5 feet coming straight down from the bottom of the slab as it is for me to measure 9 feet from the floor coming off there. So again, something you don't have to do, but it's obviously it's information then I could include on a schedule, uh, I could annotate on the model, um, it's more information I have available for me. Um, let's see what other things we've got. Um, this will recalculate if we add insulation to the pipe, it'll actually up to update the size or, or downgrade the size based on there. Uh, upper attachments. Now, Cisco itself isn't detecting what it's connected to, whether that's steel, slab, or whatever. But if I select these, let me just select these, these few hangers here. Uh, from the tools menu again of supports, you've got this select upper attachment options. 
So at the moment, um, it, it basically it's not defined of what this actually is. But if I basically want to count, let's say I want a concrete insert here and then do set. Now basically, oops, if I close out of there and reselect one of these to take a look uh, on its properties again, if you scroll down, you've got this uh, under the general section. You can see there that the concrete insert is now checked. So that's going to be available for scheduling, uh, counting. So I could count how many inserts I'm going to need, etc. Off that. Uh, at the moment in Cisco 9.1, that is still a manual method. Uh, but you can obviously just drag a window around where the slab is and say, you know, update those, drag a window where the steel is, update those, etc. Uh, etc. Et coming off that. Um, other options you've got. Uh, really to do with point data, uh, and these I'm back on the piping uh, menu here, uh, Cisco pipe, uh, on the building layout, uh, I have things like control points. Control points allow me to locate where um, these will be fixed points, typically off column lines, etc. Pre-existing points in the building allow me to locate the robot. So you typically need at least two of these. So I'm just going to put mine at a random location. I don't have any grid lines on there. Uh, you can add as many as you want, uh, but obviously you need a minimum of two to place the robot in the first place. So I'm going to put two in here. Um, I've got the option of adding in things like um, these. The rest of these points, are, are they do have names, but essentially they're very much the same point. So if I want to basically maybe designate an under, underground system, maybe I show a center line of where I need to do that excavation. Um, if I've got to anchor something, I might want to use this point. Now, these all operate in exactly the same way as the control point. Uh, they just come up with different name designations off there. Now, the other uh, options I've got here are things like sleeves. Uh, so, as an example, let me copy this slab. I want to get everything on the same floor. So, at the moment, this, this slab's on level two. So, I'm just going to drop this, this slab down to level one. I'll copy it to level one. So, I've now got two slabs in here. So let me get to a little ISO view. Uh, let me just move that over there a little bit. A little easy to access off that. So we've got various um, um, uh, 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 sleeves. Uh, I'm going to use the floor base, just our basic floor sleeve. Um, you will find if you go into the add fittings, you do have things like Hilti sleeves um, and different sophisticated sleeves. This is our, just a basic sleeve. Grab that. I'm going to place one of these here and one of these here. Now just a trick, something you may want to be aware of, uh, the sleeve by default stops exactly at the top of the slab and exactly at the bottom of the slab, based off these numbers here. Um, you will find, obviously if you, you know, generally to make it a little easy to pick up, um, I generally try and add something to the top of the sleeve, maybe half of an inch, just so it protrudes out the top of the, uh, the slab itself. Um, you can also set the diameters on these things. These are just defaulting to 30. So I'm saying I only want an 8 inch one uh, coming off there. So I place some of these around. Obviously, you get the sleeves popping in there. Right click cancel. Right click cancel when you're finished. Uh, the wall sleeves work the same way uh, coming off that. In fact, all the sleeves work the same way. So you've got the option of adding in sleeves, um, control points, things like that coming off that. Um, now, typically, I probably want to number this stuff for annotation purposes. So I'm just, again just going to grab a selection of stuff. So I'm just going to grab just this area here, and so I've got control points, I've got hangers, and I've got sleeves all in this same section. So if I select all of this and back to the supports tools menu, I've got this renumber hangers. Uh, essentially, that's a re to renumber points. Uh, it does say renumber hangers, but essentially it's a renumber points. So I click on here, it says, you've got some hangers, you've got some control points in there. So I'm going to say the hangers, I do want to add the annotation tag to them. Uh, if you've got two identical hangers, same rod, same hanger, same size, everything off there, I want them to share the same number. I want to start numbering from number one, and I want to give these all a prefix of H, the hanger, let's say. So again, all of you know, some people would use maybe the system designation, you know, DCW or whatever happens to be off there. Uh, you can use your own custom annotation family, tag family. 
Uh, I'm going to use our default, so I'm going to leave this unchecked. Hit the, uh, oh, sorry, set up the control points next. We've decided some control points in the selection set. So I'm going to add tag numbers to those. Uh, again, I'm going to start from number one. And this, these, the control points can have a designation of CP, let's say. Again, same rules apply. Hit the renumber items. So Cisco goes through, sorts out all the hangers, all the control points in this case. I want to speed based on the quantity. So I've got a fair number of selected there. 111, as it happens. But once that finishes, and uh, these actually form the point names uh, that are exported out to the robots in the point file. Now, if you don't number the parts, uh, what you'll find is what when you if you generate the um, part file without numbering the hangers, what you'll find is it takes the mark number, uh, and obviously those are more random. They're generated by uh, Revit itself, um, so the mark numbers. If we go look at one of these I didn't number, maybe one of these, I think I don't think I numbered that one. Um, item number it actually forms the base of the mark number. If I if this is blank, when I generate the point information, it will take the mark number and essentially copy that into the item number and use that as the point name on the robot itself, which does work, but obviously they're more random numbers. So you can see here, I've got H1s, uh, these over here, H2s, because they're all the same, and my control points, CP1s, CP2, and like I said, this is just our default annotation. If you don't like it, it can be modified, can be changed. You know, set these up as you need these things to be. Uh, but that's basically renumbering um, and placing points, manual points, coming through there.